OpenAI has recently launched SearchGPT. In today's video, we'll be discussing the differences between SearchGPT and Google, and we'll be discussing if SearchGPT will actually kill Google, change SEO, and change the way that we search and find information online. We'll also be taking a look at two key figures, which is 200 million versus 5 billion. So let's go ahead and get started. First, let's start by taking a look at some of the benefits and the new ways in which we can find information online using search GPT. Search GPT is native to chat GPT. If you haven't used it before, right within the chat GPT interface, when you're writing any messages, you can toggle the search GPT icon, which allows you to access the live web. This is really awesome because along with all of the other features that we have included with chat GPT, we now have the ability to search the live web. So we can integrate search with AI, search with research, search with image generation, search with summarizing text, with gathering information, and a variety of different features that we have native to ChatGPT. So right off the bat, we have a lot more things in which we can do within the ChatGPT interface. For example, if I go onto ChatGPT and I search up what is the stock price for Apple today, and I toggle on the search, as you can see, it's gonna search the web and it's gonna give me that information. I can do the same thing, of course, if I go onto Google and I search that up, what is the stock price for Apple? I get a chart, which is pretty cool. Um, and I get some information on the left-hand side here, which is going to be mostly websites that are related to stocks and prices and things of that nature. Now, what I can do within ChatGPT, I, I can ask it a follow-up question. What is this compared to of last year? So we can see here, we get the search result, which is much more in depth. We can compare today's price to last year's price right within the ChatGPT interface. We can then tell it to write an article about this topic. We can tell it to then create an image for this topic. We can then tell it to, you know, create a chart for all of this information and we can do it all within one place. While that was going to be very, very difficult to do on Google, we would have to, you know, if we wanted to find this information, I would have to do a separate search query and then get that information from Google. While I can do much more deep multimedia research right within ChatGPT, especially using the search feature. So this just increases the user's experience and allows you to get much richer and deeper information quicker using the search interface. So that's number one is that it's native to ChatGPT. It's easier to follow up. So that means I can ask it questions based upon my search requests, much easier compared to Google. Of course, if I scroll all the way down to Google, I'll be able to see Google's commonly asked questions. But again, I have to go to a separate uh, interface. I can't ask it live updated information right within the native um, sort of UI. So that is a main, main, a uh, big difference between search and Google. So it's easy to follow up. It also has a variety of different sources. Now, this is going to be very, very important because the main difference with search GPT as of now and with uh, Google is that search GPT is not necessarily influenced by um, by advertisers or people that are paying to get placed on the top of Google. So for example, if I search up, what are the best running shoes for flat? Or let's just do what are the best running shoes for winter? If I search that up on ChatGPT, again, it's going to give me some information here, but none of these are necessarily sponsored as of yet. Who knows, that may change. If I go onto Google and I search this up, I would have to navigate a lot of sponsored ads. As we can see here, there's a sponsored carousel here that we have to navigate. And then there's usually people that are bidding for keywords related to specific topics. So I have to navigate that and I have to sort of figure out which one is actually going to be the best for me, not the result that has paid the most money to be at the top of Google. So again, I get much more customizable um, results and results that are not skewed by advertisers or people that are, you know, that have big budgets that can outrank other websites or other products that actually might better that actually might be much more suited for my specific needs. So you guys get that, right? Like on the search interface, again, I could search up things. For example, what are the best running shoes? Again, same search query, and I don't get any of those sponsor ads. Now, of course, some of these results are going to be based upon some of the bigger brands, some of the brands that have brand reputation and visibility. Those are going to be the brands in which I'll see. So usually the top ranking websites are already going to show up on ChatGPT search interface, and they're also going to search um, sort of uh, pop up on Google as well. But again, I can get more granular. I can be like, okay, I have flat feet. Now suggest me the best shoes, right? So again, I can customize the search result. 
for my specific needs. Again, the biggest difference here is that I feel that this is more personalized. I'm getting a result that is based upon my actual specific needs and the things that I'm looking for. While on Google, it sometimes feels like you're getting ads first, you're getting pushed by these brands that are paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to Google to be on top of Google's um, SERP, and I'm getting pushed that information while not really understanding what my needs are. And again, it's much different when I'm using the ChatGPT interface because again, I can be more nuanced and I will get recommendations that, that feel that it's more genuine and it's more specific to what I am looking for. So that's number two is that um, it has a variety of sources. It's, it's all in one, which we talked about earlier. Um, so that means I can then ask it a follow up question. I can create a chart based upon some of the best running shoes. I can create an article. I can create, you know, an Amazon affiliate blog post based upon these different article, um, these different topics. Again, just makes it so much easier for me to do a variety of different things um, within ChatGPT compared to Google. Um, we also have a better search experience. Now, this is going to vary depending on the individual. But for those points that I spoke about earlier, I believe that it's a much, much better, much more customizable search experience compared to if we're going on Google and then we have to go through each specific article. We have to figure out which one of these are actually, you know, articles that make sense or which one of these are just affiliate articles. You know, this website may be a reputable website, but they may be paid to actually promote some of these actual um, shoes, right? They may be paid or getting a really good affiliate cut. So that's why they have an incentive to put some of these brands. It may not be the best interest for me. It may be the best interest for these websites. While on ChatGPT, it feels again like they're looking out for my best interest. And I think as more and more people continue to figure this out and use this, they will navigate more and more to search GPT compared to Google. So again, I think you do have a better search experience overall, but I would love to hear what you guys think. Again, leave a comment below. You know, let's start a discussion. Let me know what you guys think um, when it comes to the search experience between search GPT and Google. Let's promote it. This is something that we spoke about as well. Now let's talk about Google. I think Google is still trusted. Those were the two figures that I mentioned at the beginning of today's video. One is 200 million. That is about, I think the monthly users for uh, chat GPT is about 200 million, let's say 300 million people per month are using ChatGPT. While on Google, it's about three to four billion people that are using Google on a daily basis. Keep in mind, we ran some stats. Let me go ahead and show you guys what I'm uh, referring to. So Google processes approximately 8.5 billion searches per day, right? This is from seo.ai. If the average user conducts three to four searches per day, this suggests that between 2.1 billion to 2.8 billion individual users use Google daily. There's also about 5.4 billion people that have access to the internet around the world. And Google has 92% of that market share, right? So if Google has 92% of 5.4 billion, that means about 5 billion people use Google. So there is a big discrepancy between the numbers of people that are using ChatGPT and Google, and that makes sense. Google is entrenched. It is a, a a huge company. It's entrenched within our daily vocabulary. When you say let's Google something, right? So that makes sense. Um, and, it, and it's also a much older company. People will continue to use Google, but they will definitely lose some of this 92% market share that they have in the search engine market. They will lose some of that to search GPT as more and more people continue to use search GPT and understand how powerful this tool actually is. But you now also need to optimize for search GPT. You also need to optimize for places like perplexity. You also need to optimize for places like Bing. The search engine market is going to be less dominated by Google. It's going to be less of a monopoly and there's going to be bigger players, search GPT being number two coming up against Google. And then we have perplexity. And then I think Microsoft and Bing and, and search engines of that nature will also see a little bit of an increase. So there's going to be a big democratization of the search engine space. And I think search GPT has just started that. So Google is still trusted. It still has ingrained consumer behavior. People understand Google, they know Google. And I think globally, Google is much, much more recognizable compared to chat GPT. Google is still popular globally and has over five plus billion users. All in all, this is my take and the comparisons between search GPT versus Google. I would love to hear your opinion about this. I think this really is the start of a new era when it comes to how we search and how we 
gather information online. Let me know your thoughts below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.